On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are back with my neighbor's 1999 Ford Explorer. This is the two-wheel drive one that had a bad transmission. It's powered by the four liter V6. And today we're gonna reassemble this car. So there is a lot to do. Hang on to your computers uh, or whatever you're watching this on because it's about to get wild. What is going on guys? I am Watch JR Go and today, like I said, I am here with this 1999 Ford Explorer and there is a lot to do. And that list obviously starts with the most important part of every car and that is replacing the hood struts. These are SG404015. I will throw a link to everything I can in the description below. A lot of parts are going into this today. So hopefully I can come up with a good list for y'all. Anyway, we're gonna replace those hood struts. Then we're gonna put in the new radiator, which is right there. I managed to get a radiator in one day, which is crazy. And then uh, we've got a new radiator cap for that. While we're under the hood, I'll go ahead and do the new air filter. And then uh, we get this thing back up in the air and we'll finally be able to stab the transmission. And hopefully I'm driving this thing home tonight. There's a lot of work to do. So let's just jump right into it. This might end up being a little tricky with uh, only one person manning the hood and manning the hood strut, but I think we can get it done. So, screwdriver. Wow, that is stuck on there. All right, there's one side. These uh, hood struts are completely blown out. There's oil all over them. I feel like every time you do a hood struts one-handed, it should be like an Xbox and say, achievement unlocked, because that is never a fun job. So the new hood struts have the ends flipped. There's a small end and a big end. Interesting. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, I caught it. Ninja reflexes right there. Barely even saw it falling. The hood is finally supported. So much better. Here's round two of our cooler flush. This is gonna get that external one all cleaned out. Let's see, this one runs all the way back. So we'll go ahead and give it a hit. And now let's hit the other one. And we have clear fluid pouring out back there again out of the other line, and that was the one that was flushing the entire cooler out. I'm gonna run the whole can through here, then we'll clear with air, then it's finally time to reinstall the new radiator. Usually you use half the can to go one way and half the can to go the other way. This time everything's open, so we're just dumping it out onto uh, the floor, actually. I'll just wipe it up. The transmission cooling system is nice and clean now. We are ready to start putting everything back together. I can hook up the uh, external cooler back to the lines where it tees through the radiator, and we can finally put the radiator in and uh, get this thing back together. It took a lot of flushing to actually get the system clean, but the end result was crystal clear fluid, and that is obviously what we want, and it has been blown out in every direction. You can see, <laughs> I'm gonna have to wipe everything off. Okay, the lower radiator hose is on, which means it's time for us to install our actual radiator. Uh, you do need to install these clips that hold uh, the fan shroud to the radiator. So those just slide in on each side might have to do a little prying to, or wiggling back and forth to get those to seat. If you took the fan shroud out, make sure it goes back in now before the radiator. Unless you like taking radiators out twice. I mean, it's up to you. Up to you completely. A little wiggle. A little more wiggle. Fan shroud's catching me. We should be just about home. There's one side. And there's the other side. The clip nuts that hold the radiator in, uh, they both fell down on my install here, making this a little difficult to put back together. But we're gonna get it. You might have to do a little finagling with needle nose to really make this happen. Now that the tins that hold the radiator to the body are in there, I can go ahead and run them down. Seems pretty solid to me. Last one over here. A few minutes later, we have all new radiator hoses. We've got the new radiator installed. Everything 
put back in. I had to go pick up new Christmas trees to put in the little air dam there. But we've got that done too. We've got our new Wix air filter right there. That is a 46253. Um, it just sets right in there and then the lid drops on it and we'll be good to go there. You can see the new Gates hoses in there and there's a new lower Gates hose and the transmission cooler connections have all been cinched up. You don't have to really tighten those down too much, just uh, get them seated and then uh, hand tight and then give them just a little bump and they should be good to go. Now that all that fun stuff is done, I can reassemble the air intake and we can get back underneath this thing and start installing the transmission for real. So let's get to it. This is our Jasper rebuild transmission. I wanna show you guys this real quick. There's a note in this thing and it says, do not use Teflon on the threads for the trans cooler adapters. I uh, was cleaning the trans cooler adapters and the factory used Teflon. This transmission also has like 30 sheets of paper with it saying, if you do this, the warranty's void. If you do this, the warranty's void. If you over torque the shift selector past 35 foot pounds, warranty's void. If you use Teflon, warranty's void. If you don't use Dex5, warranty's void. Uh, and then even better, they just kind of, I think they took a gallon of paint and just poured it on this because you can just take a look at the paint job there. Well, they did that to the converter too. So I had to chase the threads on the converter studs there because there's no way to get those nuts on. Uh, so luckily they send you new nuts so you can ruin the old ones chasing those threads. The upper bell housing bolts, they, those are supposed to have a bracket on them and they put a bolt in there instead of the bracket. So we had to bring those over from the other transmission. Also, they were covered in paint. So you'd have to chase those threads too. What a job. Oh, and uh, the, the screws into the prindle, those had to be chased. Anyway, I'm, I'm tired of chasing threads. Well, we have the new transmission all set up and ready to go on. So it is time to pump up the jam. Pump it up. <laughs> Jake's already upset. He's already shaking his head. Anyway, 100% Jake's here and Kyle's here. And we're all hanging out doing transmission things. Uh, I guess I could do the cheat part first. I, it doesn't really matter which direction you do it in, but here we go. That is pure magic every time it happens. Oh. Okay, so it needs to come forward a little bit. About right there, yep. Getting into the exhaust here. Where at? Uh, right okay, there. I'm gonna go ahead and go up. Uh, just one. Okay, that's all the way up. And then I'll tilt towards you. you Clear? Get like Two pumps well we need to go thing. forward quite a bit let's go ahead and do it okay. cool cool that's better uh we're about to the yep keep coming up cool coming up wait 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 clear okay, we're about to the dowels um that seems like we're touching the dowels you need to come towards Kyle a little bit. Yeah. Coming towards Kyle. And then right there, I see the, uh, there's a little bit of it. Dowel right here. Okay. Do you need me to tilt? There it went. I felt a lot of it go together. There's my dowel. How's yours? Uh, it's on the edge there. Okay, I can probably rotate towards you like so. Uh, I think we need to push the back up. Okay, back up. Yep. Now can we go in? Oh, maybe. Oh, uh, maybe I was wrong. Back, back <laughs> down. Back down. Yeah, because mine kind of slipped out right there. It is. There it is. I should probably put a bolt in. Um. It's gotta be. Yeah. It's gotta be right there. And then we can pop this for the, uh, the Oh, look stick. at that. How on earth did we nail the converter? <laughs> it went straight in. Okay, so we're can all we in. Dipstick? Can we oh, is the dipstick fighting? Uh, we need to get it. Yeah, in. that's the dipstick's always the problem. Can we unscrew the dipstick from the top and then... Maybe so. And then put it in later? That might be the move. I think we'll do that. It's only got one bolt holding it on, that's for... Let me see, where is it at? Oh. I see the bolt. It's a, right up at the top. Yep, that's how we're gonna do that. All right, well, it's all in except for your dowel, right? Do I need to go up or down for your dowel? Oh, uh, 
I thought my dowel was in. Uh oh. It's. We just need. There it went. We just need a bolt. Okay, there. It's all the way in. Cool. 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 All right. Now for bolts. That was. That was kind of awesome. How did that happen in one minute? Whole thing just went together. All right. So here are the lower bolts. These are super long, which means they go, yeah, here. Okay. And these are medium, which makes them the next set. Yep. Here's your, uh, that's the one that goes through your dowel. So the very top bolts are the shorter ones. And then that one is the next one down. And the same for the doweled ones. And then uh, the lower ones are super long. So that is how all the bolts go in this thing. Don't ruin your watch, bro. Don't ruin the Apple watch. Don't break the watch. You won't be able to replace it at home for multiple months still. <laughs> I am excited. That is the skeptical. most genius <laughs> thing ever. I, I think it's hilarious because Apple's like, yeah, we're going to give you guys all the parts. And they're sitting in their offices like, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Without like the laser to bake the glue off the case, like there's no way anyone's ever replacing an iPhone screen at home. Yeah. It makes no sense. Or they're gonna have to sell the part for a thousand dollars, and it's a new phone. Yeah. They're like, hey, it's repairable at home. <laughs> it's a new phone every yeah. time. Look at that. With three of us here, this thing went in in like one minute. You got, I mean, you saw it in real time. It was no problem to go from the floor up into the car, line up the uh, dowels and shoot the bolts in. We've uh, torqued the bell housing bolts down evenly now and it's time to start dressing this thing again. The main thing is getting this transmission mount back in and the cross member. So I shot that back in, I put the exhaust mount back on it. You can see that honestly it's hanging all by itself, but there's a bracket up here for all the wires that run across it. And you have to put these two nuts on, gold nuts that were on those studs. And then you can start wiring the thing. Uh, but I wanna go ahead and get the cross member in now just because it'll make sure everything's good to go. So we took the cross member to the parts washer. If you remember, it was pretty dirty and now it looks like nice bare aluminum. So this goes in here like, apparently like that. The arch goes backwards. I'm gonna guess that's right because everything's pretty lined up here. And I don't think it can go the other way. So. Oh. You might need a big hammer to do this. There's also a sticker that says the pan bolts have to be retorqued. So we're torquing all the pan bolts to 14 Newton meters. Going all the way around this thing. All right, we grabbed a new exhaust gasket for this, which took another trip and it was incredibly hard to find. Um, that is the Felpro 61061. And it's, it's not easy to find that gasket. So now we're cleaning up the uh, mating surface here and uh, we'll throw on our new gasket. We can finally put this thing together. That was really holding us up. It took another two hours or so to go find it and pick it up and get back here. Exhaust going in. Kind of, it's a ball and socket from the factory. So I'll get one of these bolts started, the top one, and then we'll put in the gasket and that rear set of bolts. Drive shaft time. We are at the finish line. Absolutely at the finish line here. There we go, splined in. I've got my mark over here. Coming on back. This thing kind of lines itself up. It's got a centering ring. That's it, I think, right? I just got the starter in and the exhaust is done. Oh, I just need to hook up the shift linkage after this is finished. So I left it in neutral uh, so we could rotate this to finish it up. And then uh, radiator fill, transmission fill, drive it. We are gonna drive this thing home tonight. What a journey. It was not supposed to take more than a day to do this. Turns out it's hard to get these parts. This thing's getting really old. It is time for the fluid fill. The dipstick is back in its hole. Everything is wrapped up. Battery's connected. So we're, ooh, I'm spilling it out the top. Come on, how did that happen? All right, we've solved that problem. It's because the funnel's all folded up in here. Okay, I just finished vacuum filling the cooling system. Everything seems to be working pretty well. 
and checking and filling the transmission fluid of course like eight times because you have to check it and then go shift you know reverse neutral drive and do that a few times and then put it back in park come out and check it so now it should be dead on the money uh, it seems like it's shifting just fine because it backed over here so now let's get this thing out on the road and honestly we're just going to take it straight home so uh that is the end of the explorer saga a transmission done a rear main seal done a radiator done all the coolers flushed and flushed and flushed what else I, I feel like i fixed more stuff than that and the old transmission is loaded back up and in the back of this thing so he can ship it back all right let's get this thing out on the road check it out it needs a headlight too definitely needs that passenger side headlight but struts are pretty cool there we go driving home she's back on the road let's see what happens when it kicks down no slip that's so much better all right let's command overdrive off and now second back into drive and overdrive nice that looks like a good function test to me now for the 20 mile drive home that's the real test um it's all up to temp and everything, so I don't see anything changing. Seems like it's good. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop. Watch Jericho.com for cool shirts just like this. And please, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. It's the next day. It's time to deliver this Explorer back to the neighbors. They told me the remote hadn't worked in forever, so I put a new battery in the remote, got that going. Uh, aired up the tires for them. Everything on this thing should be totally good to go now. So let's, let's deliver it back. And we're there. <laughs> Very short, but it's home. Goodbye, Explorer.